All right then, so what we're going to do today is we're going to work on this window regulator and get it so the window will roll up and down again on this thing. And I know we're in kind of close quarters here, but I'll show you what's going on. This is the left driver's door, left front door here, and the glass is up in here presently. If you hear that noise, that's the birds up there on the roof. They can get around up there and do stuff. But I've got a, <laughs> I got a scissors jack and I got a piece of two by four in here holding the window up actually. And what's happened is this is this part goes uh, all right, this part goes kind of like this. And there's a little uh, uh, cover of plastic. They call it a plastic rivet that goes through this and then goes through the window some combination thereof and then the roller the roller or rollers go in this and as the window regulator goes up and down via the crank over there it pushes this thing up and down and that's how the window goes up and down as you can see the regulators ain't doing nothing because that piece ain't in there no more so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this uh, window <laughs> whatever they kind of call this, this prop here, out and rebuild this thing, put it back together. I've got to set it up here somewhere. If I can reach them, I don't think I have them in arm's length, but let's look up here. There they are. Anyway, they are just this. That's all it is. So I'm going to get you set up on the tripod so that you can watch me get this thing back apart again get all this crap out of here <laughs> and we'll go from there see in just a few all right see what i can do here i'm gonna hold the window up a little bit and then take that out and then you can take this out you can take this out. I don't think what this is. Oh, it looks like my sweater I haven't seen for a while. <laughs> Yuck. Alright, then we can kind of... Well, first thing we need to do is we need to roll the window back down. So we can see what's up here. And this regulator here I can fix and lose my grip on this window. Let's slide down here. I think this thing's only got one. Uh, yeah, it's only got one roller on it. Holy shit. Sorry. Uh, let me. thing back up again. Well, what I did is come over here without my tape. I need it. Hang on a second. Let me walk back over here. Oh my gosh. Let me turn the camera on. Pause. All right. So that way I won't waste, like my grandmother might say, I won't waste one sec second of anyone's time. Okay. I got some painter's tape. Uh oh. I don't want to work too well there. Man, this garage looks like a bomb went off in it. I don't know, maybe some people can clean clean the garage up while they're working on stuff, but I usually have to adopt a toss and sling and pitch method of getting rid of stuff and all that before I clean up again. That just didn't really work like I wanted it to work right there. Let the window go down too. I guess. I'm on. Yeah, dirty old thing, you. Ow. He's already. Well, it may or may not be what I wanted to do anyway. 
Okay, I gotta do something different actually. I'll take something that'll help here. Let me remember what I wanted to do. Let's see. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the window from going too far down in here. But I want it low enough that I can work on it. Shoot. That's not going to do it either. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I did. Up of the window. Back in with the jack. This is a Nissan jack, by the way. Be curious. All right, maybe this will work. Maybe not. This is not an easy thing to do, really, because what I'm trying to do is I have to get the. <laughs> I have to do about three things here. I have to put the Let me uh, re-strategize a little bit and see how I want to do this because this is in the way. I can't work like that. So let me, uh, let me see what I can do with this. Right back. I ain't think I'm just going to have to take a... octopus approach to this, which means I have to essentially... I have eight arms in here. All right, so let's, this is generally speaking, this is how this is, I don't know if you can see this, but you got the roller and the channel, it's in the channel, the channel is holding the glass that's sitting down in the channel assembly, and then the hole right here. And what I have to do now is I have to kind of get my hand back in the back back here, which is close to impossible. But I have to put this rivet in let me see if I can go up a little on this. Let's see if we go on. Up, up, up. Down. Uh, and you have to kind of. There we go. I wish you guys could really see what I'm doing. Is there's a hole. There's a. There's on the back. There's the metal plate. That's part of this channel. Then the glass. And what I'm doing is I'm putting this rivet in. There's a peg on it. The peg has to go towards the outer door, outside the door. So I'm just lining it up, looking through this peephole right here and sort of lining it up. And then I'm gonna push it in here. There we go. Pretty much to that so far. So let me take you off here so you can see what it's what because these things tend to, as these cars of age, they tend to break fairly regular, regularly, I guess you could say. Let me just turn my thing around. All right, so that's what I just put in right there. This little side view. And it's just a push rivet, and it should stay in there now. I don't know if I can get you in the door, actually. Woo, you're going in. There's the back of it. There's the side view. So you see the sequence of stuff and that thing had broken earlier and somebody <laughs> maybe it was uncle phil but somebody had tried to jb weld something in there and it didn't work maybe there's a piece of it left or something but um that's about all there's to it i'm going to take some stuff some lubrication stuff and 
it in there. And that little uh, groove. Mary's sleigh bells are ringing. What I'm using is I'm using multi purpose super white grease. And it's kind of sort of what I had in there, I guess, originally. You don't have to be too shy with it. And we'll try rolling it up and down a little bit. Too sure that roller is even rolling. <laughs> How do you know when your roller is rolling? I take it that thing has not been wound. There's probably a little spring in here, I guess. I like it's not been wound that high lately. Take that door handle off and just see if there's a way I can spray a little bit of goop in there. That sounds that sounds a little dry, doesn't it? I'll put some grease on it. Some lube. Hey guys, that's about it. I'm uh, what I'm gonna do after this is I'm gonna I've got a door panel. Excuse me. I got a door panel in the back back here, which is about shot, but just for amusement, I'm just gonna see if I can do something to resurrect it and put it back on before I put these, I got a door handle put on, an armrest that needs to go on, so uh, we'll try and see if I can salvage the door panel. But maybe not, may not happen. But I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna see if I can move this up, make it a little bit quieter, and that should get the door back operational. And next time Phil comes to drive this car, he can have a window to roll down. <laughs> All right then, so the door panel was a no-go, but uh, lubricated that regulator and I uh, put the door handle back on so at least I can get in and out. I've got the door panel back here but as you can see it's pretty bad so that's gonna have to hold off for now so came on in here and did a few other things that working on a few other things that I remembered I needed to do. First thing I knocked out was back under here where the fuse box is there's a screw right there which was missing that holds the fuse box into the bracket so I snagged that off the other dash back over there, get that in, and then let the gear shift out. You may wonder why I have the gear shift out. Well, the reason the gear shifts out is because that when it was in here, this thing sort of just, uh, it worked. I mean, it shifted gears and things like that, but it kind of just did this. And the problem with that is it's, there's supposed to be a spring in there that keeps it in the forward position so that it does not, you know, how you have to pull the gear shift towards you to shift gears and that makes it a little bit too easy to do that. So, you know, it wouldn't have caused me a problem because I know what's going on, but somebody else, you know, I don't know, might, but I don't like that. So I was looking in here to see what the problem might be. Get on the light up over there. And if you look in there, there's supposed to be where that square opening is, rectangular opening, at the bottom right side of it back in there is supposed to be a coil spring, which is on the other car out there. But this one's not there. There's some kind of debris in there. It's not sure what that is. So I'm going to try to see if I can dig out what that is. 
Maybe no. Oh, there's the spring. Is it the spring? All right. So there's the spring. Is it a piece of the spring that came out with it? Let's look and see. Broken springs seem to be a theme with this car. Yep, it is. So, well, coil spring's broken. And the world did that ever happen? Even grease on it. There's a coil broken off of it. So, it looked like it turned sideways in there, I guess. It's just got a little pocket down in there. It goes, whoops. I know you guys can't see anything, but the hand's in the way. Everything else is in the way, but there's a all right, there's a pocket right down in there that this thing sits in. So let me go get the one off the other car and we'll see if we can make it work. I just made that noise back here. Who knows? Something living in here probably. Well, I guess Mopar realized that they had under-engineered something because that's the spring that was in there and this one's broke. And this is the one that came out of the later model car. <laughs> now will it go in there I don't know guess I'll find out if it won't I'll have to see if I can find a equivalent spring here I know I don't have one here I don't know if they even make something like that so it's obviously the thing probably there has been when the gear shifts assemblies look the same it's just the question is going to be in here in the bowl so well, let me fuss with that thing a little bit and we'll see what happens with it. Alright, you want a quick and dirty answer on that? No. Won't go in there. It goes in, but it won't go down uh, down that way. So, to be blunt about it. So, evidently, it's only going to have to have a coil spring like that small one. So, I guess I'm going to have to go looking around for a small coil spring somewhere. I have to see where I got one. I'm not going to do it today though because it's annoying me now. So I got to clean up a little bit on this garage and I'm going to. I guess I will uh, work on the car right a little bit. This evening before I go in, I got an early road trip in the morning I got to make on Friday. So I'm not going to be out here too late. That's the way it goes, guys. There's been several things on this thing so far that wouldn't interchange. It surprises you because there's so much stuff that says 67 through 76, but the drums aren't one of them necessarily, and the gear shift return detent spring <coughs> is another one. What the hell? All right. All right, I'll join you in just a little bit. I'll do something else. Okay, so we gotta let that dry a little bit, and I got this thing on, that's why I sound muffled, I hope you can hear me. But anyway, let me tell you a little story about why that I'm just using an off-the-shelf kind of paint for this. These things I'm working on are the grills that go up in the top of here, can't see that, but... They go right there, and those are busted up, so I have free pair instead of paying 60 bucks for them so I got some of these. So anyway the deal with this is that you have to try to track down the paint code for this interior and it's not easy to do and I managed to do it 
or at least the yeah I guess it was a paint code for it but oh well, the problem is is that they don't make it's another one of those obsolete paint codes and nothing cross references and the yada 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 so uh, it's just not worth trying to go to all the trouble to match up some obsolete paint code because on top of that this paint if you took this off they go ahead and match it. it's all faded and it's not even really that close to the color that it was originally it's really a lot darker brown because I look on the back of those grills up there or I'm sorry I've got one of the reasons can you hear me somewhere what do I do with it hang on right back all right then so this is one of the reasons and you can see it's more of a dark kind of a chestnut I guess well really it may look different on camera but it's more of a kind of a goldish brown and it's not tremendously far off from that color uh, it is but not terribly so but the thing is it's a moot point now because it's especially up at the top of here it's a lot different from what color that is now so in other words it doesn't matter long story short so I just picked out a color that looked pretty close and the color I liked and that's what I'm going to do because this one's not going to be this car is not going to be a it's not a restoration in other words so it is what it is we're going to use what we're going to use and at least that way we'll have some uh, good vents I don't bust them putting them in and the other thing I did was I went at the same place Home Depot and bought one of these assortment packs of springs and hopefully in there is going to be I see one that's close already in there hopefully in there there's going to be one that's close to the one with the gear shift that's broken so I'm going to dig through this and see what I can find out it's a dark and windy night outside good thing we're safe and sound in here I ate then, so I dug through all this 84 pieces of springs, and I think I have two uh, candidates that are most likely here, and I don't have, well, how would I know the thing's broken? It's probably broken in half, but that's the wind. I have a couple that I think are the most likely, and I may have to end up shortening them up. This one is this one is the closest in overall length I think but it's a little bit larger in diameter than this one is let's see so that might be a no-go but th this one is closer in diameter but it's probably gonna end up being too long so I'm probably gonna have to Ooh, it's gonna rain later. This is probably gonna end up being the one, but I'm probably gonna have to shorten it down some. So that's okay. No problem there. We'll just uh, do the best we can with it. So I'm gonna get in there and yeah, I already get the camera in there and mount it and show you guys what I'm up to. So I'm just gonna get in there and mess around with this and see what I can do with it. And I'll show you what I did when I get to that point. And I tell you what, this car is falling apart faster than I can put it back together. I set this bottle back in here. And this thing is cracked all on its own. There's nothing that's even touched this that I can tell, unless somebody did touch it. I wonder who it wasn't me. Son of a gun. I mean, it was holding st stuff. It wasn't a bad bottle. Gosh. Yeah, bud, you picked the wrong place to hibernate. Whatever. Back at it. 
That's got to be fixed. The radiator has to be taken out and fixed now. It just spontaneously started leaking out of the bottom. I guess when I lifted this engine up, it must have flexed it or something. Of course, that hose down there had a lot of movement in it. I don't understand why that would have done that. Of course, I don't understand anything happens anymore. All right, let's get back to what we were doing. All right, boys, I think that's going to be it. If I can just get the gear shift in there without knocking that spring out of place. That's the larger of the two that was shorter. You know, I had one that was larger and shorter and one that was longer and skinnier. This does not sound right. But what I ended up doing was <clears throat> I took some coils out of the shorter, fatter one. <laughs> and so I guess I took about a third off of it. And it seems to be about where it should be it's got a little pocket in there it sits in and if it doesn't want, want to stay then I might have to put some thick grease in there to help it sit where it's supposed to remain where it's supposed to be when I put the gear shifts in so we'll see this looks like a repair that was probably not supposed to be made from this end anyway but it's one of these things you know this is one of these crazy repairs and you know, nobody would ever believe you if you told them you were doing this it's a what you do in the car today? Oh, I replaced the gear shift to tent spring. The what? Gear shift to tent spring. I broke one. You know, just one of those. Oh. So anyway, all right, guys. Enough yakking. Let me see if I can maneuver the gear shift in there and all that. And there's no way I can film this. Sorry about that. And plus, I don't know how interesting it would be if I did. So. Let's do it. Okay, I think I did it. All right, good. Well, that's the first for me. First I've ever had to do that repair, so <laughs> it's done. So I guess I'll uh, segue into something else here. Maybe I'll get back onto this reverse lamp thing. This is a switch I was telling you about in the other video. This is they they got away from these things quickly. I mean this was this is like fifties engineering and sixties engineering. And it just you know, they just realized they could combine functions into one switch and just do away with this totally. But what happens here is this this uh it sits on a steering column, mounts to the bottom of the steering column, and there's mounted on the steering column down there, there's a small plastic protrusion. It looks sort of like this, but longer. And it comes up and hits this, runs it through its travel, and moves this along and at some point it turns the reverse light, completes the circuit and turns the reverse lights on. And then as it moves further it breaks the circuit and lights go out. So it's supposed to, it's got some adjustment here, it's supposed to correspond with whatever. You have it, you have it in reverse, the reverse lights are supposed to come on obviously. So I'm going to deal with this and I kind of made a janky repair on that little thing down there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But we'll try to get out there and look at it. But so, yeah, this thing may work and it may not. I may not ever have reverse lights in this car until I do something more permanent. But let's look and see. Mm hmm. This is a very dim light. Let's, let me move that over. Misplace my regular flashlight. Alright, there that thing is right there. It's just a piece of plastic and it's attached to the column and goes that way so this looks weird. These little switches are all supposed to interchange. I'm not going with that one. It looks like it's backwards. Oh, I know what it does. Yeah, I know what it does. I don't know what it works. It sits like this in there, and then when you rake it up in the park, it pushes this thing up and then just lets it go 
back. Boy, that thing's got some spring tension on it. I may, I may mess with that a little bit to kind of help that thing be easier on that pig. Well, anyway, I'm rambling. I tell you, I'm not a. You know, this thing broke the spring. I tell you, if there's one person that would have broken, what the heck? One person that would have broken a gear shift spring would have been my buddy with a 72 Valiant because he used to he used to pull in and he'd rake this thing up and park as hard as it'd go nearly. And it never did break. Nothing broke. But uh, it turns out the lever broke off one day. I tell you, that was funny. He had to carry it on the seat with him and he'd pick it up whenever he's going to turn and stick it in there and make it go up and down. <laughs> God, it's funny. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, all right, I got to see what I can mess up down here. Jeez. All right, so uh, these drums, these old-style drums, uh, don't use the same style of wheel seal as the later ones that were on the green car. These just use a type that are smaller and they don't have a lip on the outside of them to kind of create a positive stop. So you gotta be pretty careful about putting these in. What I do is just use a socket that fits relatively well. And then I just tap them in and then I come back and I eyeball it to make sure that it's even. In other words, it's down evenly all the way around. So that's just what you got to do with that. And roll on. All right, I'm ready to throw my front wheel back on here. Both front wheels. I got started on this side and glob this thing up with anti seize. So hopefully, next time the wheel will come off easily. The lugs. And I was only able to grease my upper ball joint because this old style grease gun I got there, it doesn't reach the rest without it being jacked up so more so I'll either do that later on before I get this thing back on the road or I'll buy angle feeding for it so anyway that's where I'm at well that didn't take long the self adjuster cable on this one is broken up here and it looks like it's laying kind of down in here and I bet I don't have one of those So the self-adjusting part of this was no longer working. Right, let's keep going. Okay then, I'm about to shut her down for the night. I've pulled both these brakes apart and this quickly turned into another train wreck back here. This side over here had another broken self-adjusting cable, automatic adjusting cable, the same as the other side. And then the other side, the end of the brake line on the axle snapped off because somebody bent it and it couldn't be bent back so so last thing I did before I uh, decided to go in it's getting cold but decided just to evaluate these wheel cylinders I pulled one of them apart and it's okay it's it's usable just a little bit of honing I think will shape it right up it's got a little bit of staining but that's not pitting so anyway I think we're going to be good to go and in the event that they weren't I actually had a couple brand new ones in my stash the old brake parts box back there so all right i'm going to try to see if i can source those cables and go from there so plug along with it that's why you do it